what's going on YouTube and welcome to another Season 7 League of Legends Champion Guide. Today, I'm going to be covering Top Lane Singed, the Mad Chemist. Mix, mix, swirl, mix. So why exactly would you want to pick Singed? Well, first of all, he's got amazing kiting and split push potential. He can put out an absolute ton of map pressure on the top lane and he can even proxy farm behind turrets because of his kit. Simply toggle your Q ability, run around, and laugh if you must. He's also a champion that's pretty damn easy to play and very fun and trolly. It's pretty crazy when you can get into the enemy base and farm three lanes at once. Lastly, Singed is still a pretty strong champion even if he goes a score like 0 and 10. You can still put out a ton of map pressure and as long as you can fling a squishy target in a team fight, you're pretty effective. Singed however has a lot of hard matchups in the top lane which is part of the reason we usually end up proxy farming. Why would you sit in the lane getting bullied if you don't have to? Singed is also a champion that can be kited rather easily, especially if you don't have your Righteous Glory, Ghost, or Ultimate. If you use all three of these together, then it's pretty damn hard to stop you, but you do have cooldowns, obviously. Finally, you're gonna have to spend some time learning your Goo Flip. Put your math skills to use and find the angle to throw people into your Goo so they do get rooted instead of just slowed. For your Masteries, you have two main options, and the first one is going 18 Ferocity and 12 Resolve, grabbing Deathfire Touch as your Keystone Mastery. This keystone is incredibly effective on Singe because it activates from your poison trail and will make that burn even better. This is easily the best choice if you're looking to add a bit more damage. If you're instead looking for a bit of increased tankiness, then you'll want to go 18 Resolve and 12 Ferocity, grabbing Courage of the Colossus as your keystone mastery. This is also really effective on Singe because whenever you fling a target, you will gain that shield and be a lot tankier. Therefore, if you're instead looking for increased tankiness, then go for Courage of the Colossus. For my rune setup, I like to go for Magic Penetration Reds, Armor Yellows, Ability Power Blues, and Movement Speed Quints. This is pretty much everything you need to successfully proxy farm. The Movement Speed, Ability Power, and Magic Penetration will make farming a lot easier so you can delete entire minion waves as you do run around with Poison Trail. Of course, if the enemy top laner is there as well and they are trying to chase you, they will also take a lot of damage because of these runes and you'll be very hard to lock down. We also make sure we pick up the armor because we will be getting hit by minions a little bit, and if the enemy top laner tries to kill us as well, well, we'll have some tankiness from the armor. For your first summoner spell, you'll want to grab Ghost. Sinst is a pretty damn tanky champion when he activates his insanity potion and can usually escape pretty easily if he ghosts, flash is definitely not required on him. It's also great for chasing people down and flipping them into your team for easy kills with your fling ability. For my next summoner spell, I pretty much always take teleport. Singed already has a ton of map pressure, and this will give you even more. You can put pressure on the entire map with this spell and be very hard to deal with. If you're instead looking for added kill pressure, then you could always take Ignite. You can grab Ignite if you're in a very easy lane and you want to try to get Snowballing. Your passive is Empowered Bulwark, and this just gives you a little bit of bonus health that comes from your mana. So, very simply, Singed gains 25% maximum mana, bonus health. So this is a pretty decent passive, but we're not really going to be building much mana on Singed. Early on, I like to get items like a Righteous Glory and a ZZ Rot Portal, which of course have no mana. You do, however, get some bonus mana every time you level, so you'll get some bonus health from that as well. The one item you could get in the early game that actually has a mana on it would be the Rod of Ages, but I don't pick it up too often myself. I much prefer getting an early Righteous Glory and ZZ Rot Portal. Either way, it's a decent passive because you will get some bonus health. Your Q ability is Poison Trail, and this is your bread and butter ability that does poison damage as you move along. When toggled, Singe leaves a poison cloud behind him for 3.25 seconds. Enemies standing in the cloud's trail are poisoned for 2 seconds, taking magic damage every 0.25 seconds for the duration, continually refreshes while remaining in the affected area. So this is an incredibly strong ability on Singe because you can activate this ability, run through minion waves, and take them all out. As you pull the minions through the poison trail, it will keep refreshing and will kill the entire minion wave. You'll also want to try to drag this through the top laner as much as you can to keep them poisoned and also do some nice added damage with your deathfire touch. Try not to keep it activated for too long though because it does cost you mana per second. Your W ability is mega adhesive and this can both slow and root the enemy champion. When activated, Singe covers the target area with a potent adhesive for 5 seconds, slowing all enemies within, persists for 1 second after they leave the area. If you do fling the target into this area, which we talk about on the E page, it will root the enemy as well. Either way, this is a really solid ability because you can either use it to slow the enemy so you can get there so you can actually fling them, or if you are close enough, you can fling them into the area and root them. If somebody's chasing you while you're proxy farming, you can drop this behind you, slow the enemy champion, and proceed with your proxy farm. 
It is a pretty solid ability, however it does no damage at all, so we do only want one point in this early on, and then we want to save it for last. Your E ability is Fling, and this is the skill you want to use to throw a squishy carry into your team. When activated, Singe flings the target enemy over his shoulder, dealing magic damage which is capped against minions and monsters. Targets flung into your W ability's area of effect are temporarily rooted. This has a scaling root duration and a scaling max health damage portion, so it's a very, very strong ability. Not quite as good as your Q ability, but we definitely want to max this one second. To use this ability effectively, you want to throw people into your W whenever you can. You may, however, have to use your W as a slow to actually get to the target, but when possible, throw them into the W. A 2 second route can give your team a lot of time to follow up and easily dispose of a squishy champion. Your ultimate is Insanity Potion, and this gives you a ton of stats which makes you very hard to bring down. When activated, Singe drinks a potent chemical brew gaining bonus ability power, bonus armor, bonus magic resist, bonus movement speed, bonus health regeneration, and bonus mana regeneration for the next 25 seconds. Those bonus stats are between 35 and 80, and the regeneration is between 7 and 16. So obviously, this is an incredibly strong ultimate that you want to use whenever you're engaging into a teamfight. The bonus movement speed will help get you onto those squishy targets, and it'll even have bonus ability power to increase your damage. With all of the regeneration and armor and magic resist, you're also going to be very, very hard to bring down. It also lasts for 25 seconds, so as long as you use it properly, you should have it for an entire teamfight. Use it whenever you're in one, because you're going to be very hard to deal with. For your skill order, you first want to put a point into your ultimate whenever you can at 6, 11, and 16. Then, for its incredibly strong wave clear and harassment, you want to max your Q ability first. Then, for its scaling percent health damage and root duration, we need to max our E, Fling, second. That, of course, means we save our W ability for last. Now, I personally like to grab a point in it at level 4 for my Fling Root combo, but you could save it for level 8 and instead get a second point in your E ability. It is up to you. My preference is to have it at level 4 for its root. For your combos, we first have the Mega Adhesive Fling Rooting combo. First, I activate my Ghost so I can get into range and activate my Q ability so they will get poisoned. Then, quickly drop your W on the ground and fling the target into the area so they will be rooted. Easy kill, easy life. In this combo here, I first activate my ultimate and my Ghost to close a very large gap on the enemy. Then I drop my Mega Adhesive on the ground to slow the enemy champion, but since they do flash out of it, I can fling them back into it and root the target. Of course, before you actually get to the enemies, make sure you activate your Poison Trail so you do that poison damage. In the lane phase, you'll either want to be proxy farming or just shoving minion waves. As long as I feel like I'm somewhat safe, I'll proxy farm with Poison Trail and put a ton of pressure on that enemy team. Try and get some deep wards so you know that you're safe. Once you've shoved the minion wave, you can look to roam to the mid lane. Start by dropping your Mega Adhesive on the ground and then fling the enemy into it. This will root the target and make your gank a lot more effective. Generally, you'll also want to buy an early ZZROP portal to put more pressure on the top lane and you'll want to try to get that tower down as soon as possible. In teamfights, your main goal is to flip a squishy carry into your team so they can quickly delete them. You can use your Mega Adhesive to either slow them to catch up or to flip them into it for its root. Make sure you use your Ghost, Righteous Glory, and your Ultimate to get to the squishy targets in the back line. This will really increase your speed and should get you there easily unless you eat a lot of crowd controls. I'll generally activate my Insanity Potion as soon as I'm somewhat close to them so it gives me that bonus movement speed and some insanely strong stats. After you fling a squishy target, try and kite as much as you can with your Rylize if you did buy one and soak a bunch of damage. Now let's look at some of your hard matchups, and first up is Kale. Kale's going to be hard for you because of course she is a ranged champion that will be able to bully you. If you try to engage onto her, she can hit you with her Q ability to slow you and keep doing her damage. There's not too much you can do to beat a Kale early on in the game, so you're going to have to try to proxy farm and avoid her as much as you can. Put as much pressure on the top lane as possible, and then look to roam mid. Next up we got Kennen, and he's a champion that can go for either that Blade of the Ruined King on hit build or AP build and still beat you rather easily. Yet again, spend most of your time trying to proxy farm because even if you try to engage on a Kennen, he can go into Lightning Rush and escape. In the late game, if he's trying to get a good position with his ultimate and he does use it, try to fling him away from your team so he doesn't get off much damage. Next up, we got Pantheon, who's going to be a complete pain in the ass because of his spear spam. There's not too much you can do to deal with it if you're in the lane, so try to not be in the lane and proxy farm as much as possible. Keep in mind though, if he is level 6, he can always use his ultimate to jump on you if the jungler does come and try to stop your proxy farm. He's not the best late game champion, so just wait until you outscale him. Last here we have the biggest pain in the ass there is, Teemo. 
Teemo's a champion that can do an absolute ton of damage, and if he decides to get a frozen mallet with that and his W's movement speed, you're never going to get on top of him. Yet again, try to proxy farm if possible, because if you are in the lane, he's going to make you hate yourself. You're usually going to be a much stronger late game champion than him, so wait until you outscale. In conclusion, if you find yourself in a hard matchup, try not to be in lane. Alright, now let's finish this off with our item build, which starts with a Dark Seal, Refillable Potion, and a Warding Totem. For your first buys, you have three extra Dark Seals and a Corrupting Potion. This will give you some really nice stats and make that Corrupting Potion give you a lot of sustain. For your core build, you have the Righteous Glory, ZZ Rot Portal, and Rylai's Crystal Scepter. The Righteous Glory is a fantastic item on Singe because you get some health and regeneration, and also the activation, which is the main reason you buy it. The bonus movement speed it provides will help you get to those backline squishy champions, and the slow it provides when you get there will also help your team kite away, since the tanks in the front will be slowed. You then get a ZZ Rot Portal just to make your split push even harder to deal with. And finally, the Rylai's Crystal Scepter slow works fantastic with your Q ability. If you get one of these, if people are chasing you, you'll be able to kite for days and deal a lot of damage while taking none in return. For boot options, I usually go for Boots of Swiftness for all-around mobility, but you could get Merc Treads against AP and CC heavy teams, or Ninja Tabbies against high AD teams. For your item pool, you first have the Rod of Ages, which is a viable first buy, but I don't pick it up too much myself because Righteous Glory and Caesar Rot Portal are way too strong. Then, a Leandris is a fantastic way to add some extra damage, and your Poison Trail will be also burning for extra damage. It's pretty solid against really tanky teams. Then, of course, we have the armor options in the Dead Man's Plate, Randowins, and Thornmail. The Dead Man's Plate here is my favorite because of its extra mobility, but the Randowins is fantastic against high crit champions like Yasuo, and Thornmail obviously fantastic against high AD teams to reflect some damage. Then, if you needed some magic resist, you could also go for the Spirit Visage, which also works great with your ultimate because of that bonus regeneration, which gives you some more healing. And finally, like every other champion in the game, you could get a Guardian Angel in the late game so you can come back to life. For my example full build though, I take the core build, the Boots of Swiftness, and then the Dead Man's Plate, and the Spirit Visage. You'll have a really good initiation from the Righteous Glory, really solid split push from the ZZ Rot Portal, and some awesome tanky stats from the Dead Man's Plate, and the Spirit Visage, while also being able to slow an entire team with your Poison Trail because of the Rylies. This is pretty much always the build that I will go for. But that is everything I've got for Top Lane Singed. Don't forget to check out the video description below for a link to all my social medias. I stream every night but Tuesday at 7pm Eastern now, and of course that link is down there. As is my Discord server, and my second YouTube channel. Also, if you guys did enjoy the video, please make sure you like and subscribe. But other than that, thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy it, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy, have a good day, and peace.